Hello everyone, DJZ32, back again, time for everyone's favorite video of the week, What's on Deck? And there's a lot to talk about, there's a lot of cool decks that launched this week on Kickstarter, there's also some crappy decks that launched, there's some relaunches, and there's all sorts of other decks that are non-Kickstarter related to talk about, including a special deck to tell you about coming soon, Theory 11, so stay tuned, I'll tell you about that. A little bit later, let's get on with Kickstarter. First of all, we got Bicycle Gnomes playing cards from Collectible Playing Cards. Currently 54% funded, 24 days to go. It's on way towards getting funded. It's definitely an interesting deck. It's definitely different than anything we usually see from Collectible Cards or elsewhere. Very interesting style for the artwork on the faces and the backs and everything. I like it. I do recommend checking it out. It's it's fun, it's different, it's unique, and I really have nothing you know negative to say about it, which is good. <laughs> um, let's move on. Talk about the next one very quickly. Grinders from Randy Butterfield, Midnight Cards, sixty percent funded, thirty six days to go. It's on the way to getting funded as well. Very nice looking cards. I love the back design and that circular pattern. This is the inspiration. It says a poker grinder is a player who plays a low risk game. Typically, they achieve small but frequent wins. The term is also often used to describe people who play poker to make a living. Players who brave the daily grind. So, there you go. It's kind of poker inspired. You can see that kind of, there's like a poker chip, poker chip element to the back design and also on the faces. Court cards, a little bit standard but still completely custom. They took the standard court card and amped it up a bit. Um... The pips look really nice as well on the on the faces, and um, I like it. It's definitely really cool. This one also a pretty clean project. All the, the only thing they're offering is a deck, a brick box, and a coin. That's it. Nice and simple. I like it. I mean, we don't need all these add-ons like dice and chips and stickers and posters and art prints and t-shirts and bleh. Keep it nice and simple. People want playing cards? There you go. Uh, I can't ask for much more. Moving along. Meridian Playing Cards, Ruby Edition from Ideal Playing Card Company, aka Jason Nguyen. For some reason, this is under a different account with a different name of uh, Tuan Nguyen. I'm not sure if that's his father or whoever, but for some reason, he's decided to use a different account with this one. And he's decided to try this one with Legends playing cards instead of USB-C with a slightly smaller goal, I think. Um, you know, the artwork is is not bad on the back design. I'm not sure how it's marked or why you would how you would mark that, but it's apparently marked. Um, moving along, you can see the inside of the box is nothing overly exciting. <laughs> the Joker. This one Joker anyway is interesting. It's got a dedication to his grandma and cousin who both passed away this year. And my condolences. And there's actually, if you look closely where my cursor is, if you can see my cursor, I don't know. There is a, underneath Meridian and Family, there's a reveal that says your card is the Seven of Spades. It's a nice reveal, hidden uh, subtly in there. And I like that. And then you get to the pips and they're, you know, they're okay. Nothing overly glamorous. And the court cards are basically standard with weak colors. Um, it is what it is. My biggest concern is the prices. You can see one deck is $6 US shipping included. You're talking about $3 shipping and you're going to tell me he's going to have enough money for this project? I have concerns about that for sure, the financial aspect. And uh, his other project, the Ambit Playing Cards, which is still on Kickstarter, and his other account, and is not going to happen. He was offering freebies, I think you have to hit a stretch goal, and you spend X amount of dollars or have a certain amount of decks, you get a free deck. And again, that's a financial problem. You can't be offering freebies or really cheap decks on Kickstarter because then you won't be able to cover your ass later on 
Uh, you won't have enough money. So buyer beware, in my opinion. And this is a relaunch, by the way. It seems like he, that he likes to cancel projects and relaunch them and then he'll, he'll cancel stuff that he sees isn't working out. And he just keeps trying different stuff and he doesn't focus on one particular deck. He just keeps trying different deck. In a few days, he'll probably launch a different project. Who knows? But anyways, moving along to another relaunch. Neponia playing cards from Kieran Alexander. You might call me. Mentioning this one a couple of months back, maybe. Um, Japanese theme. I like the artwork and the faces and everything. The pips. This is to be printed by More Arts Playing Cards and PC. Which um, I wouldn't do. I would go with MPC, if anything, for a better quality. Uh, I do like the faces, though. What I'm not so much of a fan of is the back design. It just leaves a little bit to be desired. It looks a little bit plain. I understand the theme. It's uh, based on Japanese architecture, inspired by these sliding doors and everything. But I don't know. I'm just not really feeling it. I, I mean, I guess it's not bad. And the faces are pretty cool. Definitely the NPC thing is a little bit of a turn off. I guess it just depends on if you like it or not. Uh, I mean, it's not bad. Nothing too negative about it. Moving along though, Eminence Playing Cards from Vadim Smolensky. This one is currently 53% funded, 26 days to go. I should mention Meridian is 6% funded, 28 days to go. Not looking too good at this rate, even though there's lots of time. Um, it just did not get much funding in the early days, so I don't think it's going to get much funding. Uh, Neponia is 32% funded with 20 days to go. This one, like I said, 53% funded, 26 days to go. Previously, he's done the Lumberjack Bicycle Playing Cards. This is definitely a bit different. There's two decks, a gold one and a platinum one, aka a silver, with uh, metallic inks on the faces, foil on the tuck cases, um, diamond finish to be printed by Legends. Thousand of each color. I love these uh, pips on the faces and the Ace of Spades. And I love the court cards. They're definitely different and unique. Um, and I definitely recommend checking this one out. It's a pretty cool deck. I like how the faces contrast from the colors of the back designs a bit and stand out. I like the metallic inks and everything. And I'm definitely looking forward to this one. Next up, we get to the downright ugly. <laughs> this is a Playing Cards Vegas series, whatever, from Benji Cohen. This is actually a relaunch, and it boggles my mind because there has been nothing changed, nothing improved, nothing done to this deck since the previous project. Even worse, the previous project had a goal of 300 pounds. Look at the goal on this one. 2,100 pounds. That's seven times the amount of his original goal, which he was not able to achieve. And right now he's at 150 pounds, and I don't see it happening. It just, I don't understand why he would bother. And he says he's going to have exciting artwork and beautiful handling for magicians and cardists. But he needs money to start printing. Good luck with that. Um, there's your Ace of Spades. It's very minimalist and... Blah. And why the hell are these indexes like in the middle of the card? That's kind of weird. At least it looks like it. The Joker's not overly exciting. It just says Joker and it's got four pips. And that's what you get on the back design. It says Vegas and it's got four pips. Because. <laughs> and we don't see any other faces. He said he's talking about good quality for handling. Um, oh wow, it's going to be printed by the U.S playing card company worth 2100 pounds that doesn't seem to add up to a whole lot of money maybe five thousand dollars us that's not enough to print a deck of cards for the USBC. and then the biggest problem is and i think that's a, the reason why the goal is much higher is he wants to produce with USBC now originally it wasn't but the fact of the matter is that is not going to sell these playing cards. You cannot put a deck on Kickstarter and go, Oh, this is printed by USB-C, the maker of Bicycle, and expect it to fund. That alone is not going to fund a deck of cards. 
the deck of cards funds the deck of cards. If a deck of cards, a deck of cards can be produced by NPC, Legends, Expert Playing Cards, NPC, Noir, which is Noir Arts, USBC. It doesn't matter who produces it. If the deck of cards, I mean, there's even uh, there's been a deck of cards that was produced by um, Ad Magic, which is where I produced my deck of cards, a VJZ32 deck, sometime a couple of years back, whatever it was, uh, and that was um, the. It was a mermaid team deck. I forget what it's called right now. But it was a deck that was produced by a company that's not very well known. Not the best quality. But it had excellent artwork. And it sold itself. And people bought it. They didn't care who pr printed it. If you got a deck of cards like this. That looks like crap. Nobody's going to buy it. They don't care if it's being produced by USB-C. Or NPC or whoever. It looks like crap. Nobody's going to buy it. So it doesn't matter. That's what I'm trying to, trying to say. I apologize for going on and on. Um, and then 10 pounds for a deck of cards. Oh wait, okay, it's got 5 pounds. That's still a little bit pricey, but 10 pounds is even worse. And I don't know what that's... Oh, and there's a sketch as well. Big deal. Like there's a... And he's talking about sketches of the deck artwork. What deck artwork? He hasn't shown us any artwork from the first project to this one. On the faces, I think the only additional artwork he's shown us here is the Joker. And based on what we're seeing, I'm not overly optimistic about what the faces might look like, especially since he hasn't bothered to show us then, so... I don't know, I don't understand the point of launching this one again when... He's not showing us anything, and it's not very exciting. Moving along, I apologize for granting, but that one is 7% fun at 28 days to go. This next one is the Kingdoms of Zalnor, I think that's how you pronounce it, from... Roaring Productions, it's bicycle branded from the USB C. It's currently 2% funded, 28 days to go. Not looking good at this rate. And I'll show you the back designs. They're not bad, except that he's got pips, <clears throat> four pips making it a one way back design. Uh, two different uh, colors, which bring it up to $19,000 gold, which is a bit much. Look yes, a stretch goal of $28,000 for a but ugly seal, in my opinion. It's ugly. <laughs> I don't see why bother having a stretch goal for something that looks like that. It's not exciting at all. Um, but here's my biggest problem. You can see the court cards. They're just all over the place. First of all, the jacks represent knights, the queens, mecha pilots, whatever that means. The kings are the leaders. Go figure. And the aces are planes, because that makes a lot of sense. The spades represent robots. The hearts, for some reason, are feudal Japan, which really fits in with the rest of the deck. <laughs> uh, the clubs are parasitic aliens, and the diamonds are armor and weapons. I really don't understand. You got all these different themes and people and creatures thrown in there. It just doesn't work. It doesn't mesh together, and this is a... Not the first time I've seen this in a deck of cards. And it doesn't work. People are not interested. Focus on one theme and it'll be better. Produce a deck that is on Feudal Japan. Or produce a deck that is on robots. They don't even look like robots. Or maybe one that's on Parasitic Aliens. Don't throw three or four themes together with one deck. It just does not work. Anyways, moving along. Last call, Tarot Playing Cards from Sandow. Uh... Okay, <laughs> it's currently 75% funded with 24 days to go. That's because it's only got a $600 goal, so it's going to fund. Big surprise. As you can see, it's a tarot deck. It does have 78 cards. It looks like it's poker size, not tarot size. Uh, back design is okay. It's not overly exciting. And then the faces, again, are, you know, they're not bad. They're not exciting, but they're not bad. Um... <clears throat> And of course it's got your cups, your wands, your swords, and your pentacles, as you would expect. Um, I mean, it's fine for what it is if you're looking for a tarot deck that's poker size. There you go. <clears throat> but it's definitely not something that I'm overly interested in. This is what really gets me. Um...
Apparently, it's actually published pre playing card decks before. What they are, I have no idea. <laughs> And they got some public, so I don't know who it is. But here's what he said. He wanted to create a deck like this for years and countered major obstacles. Small print runs from card publishers are extremely expensive. And it's hard to enjoy a deck of cards when you know you've paid 40 or $50 for them. Ideally, a deck of cards should be cheap enough so you don't hesitate to use them. Cards are meant to be handled, and more importantly, to be used. I agree 100%. However, that does not mean you should make it cheap-ass quality. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> but that is that. I don't think it's going to fun. I mean, it is going to fun, but it's, eh, nobody's interested. Next up, bleh, another horrible one. To be printed by USB-C, Inceptive, Inceptive, eh, eh, I apologize. Inceptive playing cards from Valentin Azima. I'm guessing he's a cardist. I have no idea who the hell he is. And apparently he does not have a whole lot of followers at this rate. The back design of the cards is horrible, it's just a couple of V's. You'd think I'd like that because it's my initial, but eh, I could do so much better. Anyone can do much better than that. I mean, it looks like he put zero effort into that. And he's got guys like Wayne Hootson and Juan Tamer is promoting this. I'm pretty sure these are photoshopped and that these people did not handle these decks or ever see these decks. In fact, they really look like bad photoshops to me. I'm pretty sure I've seen this Juan Tamara's picture with a different deck. And, and there's another Photoshop, obviously. And that really makes it... I mean, when you see this inside of Volcano and Iceland, then you know for sure that that's a Photoshop, and that brings these other ones into question as well. And that's false advertising, in my opinion, if those are fake. The faces... We'll get to them. They're here somewhere. They have to sell 3 million pictures of the back design because one isn't enough for some reason. And I apologize for ranting. The Ace of Spades is decent. The box is not exciting. And then the faces are standard USB-C court cards with some recoloring and the faces removed because that's exciting. <laughs> I, I don't understand. <clears throat> His uh, reason for not customizing the rest of the cards is because as a magician, he likes to be able to add a card from another deck sometimes. So the number cards are standard for back changing effects and whatnot. And that's fine. It's understandable for magic purposes. But you don't see a lot of playing cards selling on Kickstarter for magic purposes. So I don't know why. <laughs> <clears throat> um... 10 euros for a deck of cards. Free wallpapers. Yippee yay yay. He's gonna get this produced or delivered by December? I don't think so. USPC obviously has a queue line. By the time this project is funded, it's gonna be November. There is zero chance in hell this is gonna be delivered by December of this year. Maybe December next year. <laughs> At the rate of some Kickstarter projects, but I doubt it's gonna be delivered this year. So a lot of issues with this one, and I don't really see it happening at this rate. I apologize if the video is a bit long. Let's move on to Duel from David Goldclink, a.k.a. Vanda Cards. It's currently 52% funded, 21 days to go. Um, it's doing good. This is part of his uh, Vanda Artist series by Joel Wall. And to be printed by USB-C, 2,500 decks. There's the well. <coughs> and she's depicted on the card, apparently. It's pretty cool. <coughs> um, it's a red deck. There's a blue one, if it gets unlocked. And for some reason, the blue one looks like it's a bridge size in this picture. I don't know, maybe it's just the angle. I do like the faces, they're nice, they're cool. Uh, and the backs are, you know, they're fine. Uh, so definitely check that one out, you might be interested. Next up, Jones decks, which are currently 4% funded, 28 days to go. If 
Got a pretty big goal, but that is an Australian $30,000. Australian works out to $1,000 US, which causes some concerns. But let's move on. If the cards look a little itty bit familiar, it's because they should. These are basically new versions of the, um, <clears throat> what's my call? It's the, uh, the new versions of the White Knuckles playing cards, which you can find a review on my channel. Originally came out in red and blue. It's got different back designs, kind of based on the original one. There's this color deck. Uh, which is okay, I guess. And then there's also a ghost deck, as you can see, it's kind of white colored back. Um, nice custom pips throughout and everything, and custom court cards, although the artwork is basically the same or similar to what was in the previous white knuckles decks. It seems like it's mainly just a new back design and a different box. No longer white knuckles cards or zones playing cards, named after the creator. Because <laughs> um, the problem I have with this, and others have pointed out, is that it's unrealistic. He wants to print 5,000 of each. That's 10,000, or is it, sorry. <clears throat> Where does it say how many he wants? I think, um, oh, sorry. It's, he wants to produce 10,000 decks of each color for some unknown reason, maybe because it's cheaper. And he's only got a $21,000 US goal. That's 20,000 decks at $21,000, not including shipping. Something does not add up. And that is a problem, especially since he's in Australia and doesn't talk about that I know of um, <clears throat> any kind of US or North American fulfillment. So definitely some mathematical issues. I think that he said definitely do some recalculating and we want sometime in the future. It's not going to fund it this way anyway. Apparently, though, the creator is willing to make up the difference with their savings, so go figure. <clears throat> and that's going to cost twice as much as what they have for a goal. That's a lot of money. Moving along. Um, and that one, I, I mentioned it's 4% funded 28 days to go, and I'm not sure it's going to happen. The Sirens deck, 7% funded 33 days to go, I'm not sure it's going to happen either. Apparently it's from a Canadian. Um, it says it's using a premium silk cardstock, whatever that means, I have no idea what that is, or what it means, or what it's like. And it says from Zian Hao Kai, I think that's how you pronounce it, in Asian, obviously. Um, interesting tuck case. Uh, interesting artwork on the face is not bad or anything like that but I have some concerns over you know what the stock is like and the finish and everything apparently it says someone here that it is metallic -y. <clears throat> um, and it's it, it's also a bit pricey it's twenty dollars for one deck Canadian and then there's additional shipping costs outside of Canada Which is nice for it seems, but I'm just I'm not interested in it That particular it is other decks that I'm much more interested in right now, and I can't Pledge for 20 decks at a time or anything like that Anyways, that is that stay tuned. I'll be right back with more All right, let's move on with the non Kickstarter decks and some Kickstarter teases First of all, coming soon, uh, coming in October, from Jackson Robinson, the Bicycle Crazy 8 Spring Cards. It's looked pretty cool. Um, it's nice to see a bicycle branded deck from him again. Although I will remind you that he does have three projects that are currently outstanding, and I would prefer myself if he would get some of those done and fulfilled before getting more decks, you know, put into development and I thought there was some artwork here but I'm not seeing it there we go check that out it's pretty cool looking definitely different from Jackson Robinson and obviously definitely looking forward to it 
Then there's this, coming soon from Theory 11. You've been waiting for it for about half an hour. Here it is. The new Blue Jack Sellers, and it looks awesome. I am a fan of Jack Sellers. It's one of my favorite decks. And while we already have three colors, and that's more than enough, hey, I'm happy for another color. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's more later on, like, you know, green or gold or silver or something. But, um... There's nothing wrong with it. Let me check this out. There's the king. Looking good, of course, as usual. <clears throat> Apparently the same court card's not a big surprise. Moving along. This is coming soon. Well, actually it's coming probably next year. From Giovanni Moroni. It's another... Omnia deck, the Omnia, it says the Golden Age, the Omnia Antica. Uh, that's uh, Third Way is his company. Looks pretty cool. Not sure exactly. Oh, take that out. Not sure exactly um, what's going to be special about it, but we'll find out obviously in the coming months. And this one's not working. I've been having some problems for some reason. This is coming pretty soon in October, from Lotrek, Half Moon playing cards, it's the Grotesque Macabre playing cards. Obviously, uh, a, a bit of an, an update on his original Grotesque playing cards. Or a new take on them. And here's one of the cards, it's a baby with a hatchet. Scary. Oh, who the hell is that? Uh, but anyways, looks pretty interesting, that's coming next month. And also coming very soon from, I believe it's Pure Imagination Projects, is this. A Sleepy Hollow deck, which looks beautiful, completely custom. It's definitely a different step, uh, a different direction for them, based on what they've done before, which is basically standard deck. So, looking forward to it. And of course, I'll keep you updated on when that's going to launch. And again, we're not working. Oh, there you go. And then there's this which has apparently released to Dan and Dave's uh, club members recently, is a new deck from Ferdman Records, ferdmanrecords.com. That's why there's three men on the back of the box. <laughs> and it's from Art of Play, and it's available on Art of Play's website as well. Pretty simple diamond back type back design. Interesting uh, court cards and artwork. And I like the yellow on black, of course, the yellow pips. <laughs> Reminds you of, uh, what is it, the Bicycle Scorpion deck. <laughs> Moving along. Uh, not working again. Stars and Magic from Low Scarabeo, which was on Kickstarter and failed horribly, has apparently been self-funded and produced by him. You see some of the artwork here. And apparently the back design is marked. And there's a scaff card of Harry Houdini, three and a half of hearts. Now, all the cards have different magicians, past and present, on the faces, mostly past, I guess. And there's two colors that you can see, black and white. These are now available at collectiblepointcards.com. You can use the code VJOSA32 and get 10% off your order. Just had to get that in there. So definitely check it out. They are pr printed by USB-C. The main difference between the black and the white is that it's an inverted color scheme. So whatever is black on the one deck is white on the other deck and vice versa. And one more to tell you about uh, is uh, the Lux Palm Playing Cards from Rick Davidson that he's designed for JP Playing Cards. They are coming out this Friday, October the 2nd at 4 p.m. GMT. Whatever that means. But here you can see the inside of the tuck case and the tuck case. These are absolutely gorgeous and I definitely recommend checking them out. <clears throat> Check that out. Very nice. I definitely going to be one of my favorite decks once I get them. <laughs> um, that is that. That's what I got for this week. I will see you next week with more what's on deck. Hopefully it'll be a much shorter video. This week was just really busy when it comes to playing cards. And I apologize about the length.